We're having a discussion on MATLAB. <laughs> I'm breaking out the whiteboard for this. So here in this box has been something that I've just really enjoyed starting the quarantine, right? I'm I won't say you got addicted to them, but I mean, I love these Killcliff. Um, supports a great cause as well. And I'm not typically an energy drink person and I probably don't consider them energy drinks even though this one I've got has got a little bit more caffeine. Just, just been in love with these. But today, on Big Data Big Questions, we are going to be talking about why data engineers should not learn MATLAB. So maybe a little controversial, but I don't think so. Let me explain why. So first, let's start off by talking about really what MATLAB is. MATLAB is a proprietary multi-paradigm programming language and numerical computing environment developed by MathWorks. MATLAB allows matrix manipulation, plotting of functions and data implementations of algorithms, creation of user interfaces, those are very basic in my opinion, and interfacing with programs written in other languages. Thank you Wikipedia for that. Another thing, we just defined what MATLAB is. Now, something that I've said for a long time, and if you've heard me talk about it maybe even when I went through Andrew Ning's machine learning course, you may have heard me call it MATLAB. I don't know how I knew that there was a math lab, but apparently there is a math lab. So what is a math lab? Not to be confused with MATLAB and not MathWorks, very confusing. MATLAB is a computer algebra system created in 1964 by Carl Engelmann at MITRE and written in Lisp. Not to be confused, we're not talking about MathLib today. No, not MathLib. We're not talking about MathLab today. We're talking about MATLAB. And I'm not a huge fan of it. And, you know, one of the questions that I got was, you know, why is that kind of a blind spot for you? Is that something that data engineers should be using? Where does this fall into kind of our career path or the things that we should be working on if we're, you know, trying to better our skills and try to find a new role? So I'm going to make something I typically don't do here and make a statement saying that, you know, it's not one of my favorites. It's not something that if I were looking for a role in data engineering that I would go after. And 100%, I could be wrong on that, but probably not. And it is a blind spot because I really didn't start using it until I took the Andrew Ning's uh, machine learning course. And part of it was, you know, it was a tool to teach more machine learning and the more mathematical formulas. So it was a different way for me to look at it and understand more data science. But I think that if you're specifically looking for data engineering, then you're probably not gonna be using MATLAB or probably, yeah, prob probably not gonna be doing that long in your career if you that's where you start off. So that's mainly coming from the data engineering perspective, but let's jump on the whiteboard and find out why I think that. All right, so back to MATLAB and why I think that if you're a data engineer, it's probably not gonna be your focus. Let's start off by remembering what we've talked about in previous videos. Um, I'll link it here, probably pointing to the wrong side. Need to figure that out better, but you can see the difference between data engineers and data science or data scientists. And really it just comes down to where we see MATLAB being used versus what are the skills specific to a data engineer. So just as a quick reminder here, data science, heavy on the math, correlation, you know, algorithms, types of data set that may or may not impact our algorithm or the answer that we're trying to solve, right? Um, so, you know, if, you, if you've got a simple problem where you're trying to figure out how can I increase sales on a specific product by 10%, I'm looking at different data types, seeing what kind of impact they can have and what algorithms to give me that level of confidence in that solution. So MATLAB, great solution here probably, right? When we're talking about fine tuning, finding an answer. When it goes into production, the data sets, that's where it's really interesting for 
data engineers to come in and be able to talk, and that's where we get into the scale factor. So both these teams are working on deep learning and machine learning. So it's not that they're only doing machine learning for data science, data engineers are only doing deep learning. There's a crossover, right? And, and you know, we're, it's, it's split here, but it's different sides of the component we're working. Data engineers, more coding based, focuses on architecture, right? You know, data scientists, Definitely, you know, don't want them having to worry about, hey, do we have the right architecture? What's the networking look like? Throughput, those kinds of things. That's, that, that's a great project for your data engineers to be able to build that architecture out. Scale out. So scale out when we start talking about large data sets. So maybe we're doing a POC from a data science perspective back to our increasing sales of a specific product. And now we want to bring in more data sets and put something like this into production. MATLAB's probably not gonna scale, right? So this is where we're probably Maybe going to be talking about, I don't know, TensorFlow, Panda, uh, Python with Pandas, maybe, you know, even going down the route of Spark or some of the things in the big data system. So implementation here, coding, scale out, those large data sets. So this is the primary focus that we're looking at for talking about the data engineers, right? And so that's why I say that, you know, more coding base languages. So even if you're not a data engineer that's gonna focus on the architecture or administration side, maybe you're gonna focus mostly on the coding and you're gonna be maybe even a blended data scientist, data engineer, I'd still would prefer codes, or I'm sorry, prefer frameworks that would scale out. And so that's why I think that MATLAB, if we were talking about specifically a data engineer, probably not gonna be something that I would focus on if I were in your shoes. So last point to kind of bring this down to a close around MATLAB and you know my thoughts around it for data engineering. Also look at the skills for career. So quick search on Indeed, you've seen me do that quite a bit here. Easy to kind of look through and search. So looking for careers with MATLAB, 9,000. And I didn't, I didn't put any specific location on it, just let it give me the default, versus 65,000, over 65,000 when we're talking about Python. Now, some of those could be application developers and things that maybe are outside of the realm of data engineers or even data scientists, but I think at scale, we're still looking at about a large opportunity there. And just for fun, because I was curious, I typed in Math Lab. There are 23 jobs out there for math. Math Lab, Math Lab, I always mess that one up. Hey, thanks again for tuning in today. I, I'm excited, got to get on the whiteboard, loved it. And, um, you know, nothing against MATLAB. I think it's a great tool. Um, I used Octave, the open source version when I was going through Andrew Ning's uh, machine learning course, but specifically in the skill sets that I see that are valuable when we're talking about data engineers, not, not really something that I'm gonna recommend. If you have a question, I'll do my best to answer it. Put it here in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you again on Big Data, Big Questions. and interfacing with programs written in other languages. Although MATLAB is intended primarily for numerical computation as optional toolbox uses, the MUPAD sim symbolic engine allowing access for symbolic computing avail availabilities, abilities. An additional package 